How's it going everyone? My name is Dan, but you can call me Malone. And did you know that more money has been invested in the stock market in 2021 than the combined total of the last 20 years? The financial, consumer, energy, materials, real estate, and infrastructure sectors had record-breaking levels of investment in 2021, with technology and healthcare having their second best year. In fact, between March 2020 and April 2021, stocks gained 20 2.4 trillion dollars in value. Now this has happened for a number of reasons. Interest rates have bottomed out at virtually zero, making it very cheap to borrow money. The Federal Reserve and central banks have spent the better part of the last two years injecting trillions of dollars and euros into the economy and us investors are buying stocks hand over fist. It's very easy in these crazy times to have a short-sighted view of investing. Whether it's earning a 100% return from the S&P 500 in under two years, or turning $100 into 14 million with Shiba Inu. History has proved time and time again that buying and holding investments over the long term almost always outperforms trying to time the market for quick and easy gains. In the research paper, Do Individual Day Traders Make Money? It was found that more than 80% of day traders lose money in a typical six month period. Putting money into hype stocks or hot cryptos isn't investing either, it's gambling. Investing is all about making sensible decisions that will A, protect the value of the money you invest, and B, earn a return that at least outpaces the rate of inflation. The best way to do that is to buy and hold for the long term. So in this video, I'm going to discuss three buy and hold investments that would be perfect for any long term portfolio. But before I do, can I ask that you take just two seconds out of your day to gently massage and then smash the like button. As my way of saying thanks for liking the video and subscribing to the channel, here's a quote to consider from American investor Philip Fisher. The stock market is filled with individuals who know the price of everything but the value of nothing. With that being said, let's get into the video. So first up are exchange traded funds, better known as ETFs. If you've done any research on investing for beginners, you've no doubt come across ETFs. An ETF is an investment fund which is traded on a stock exchange. And when you buy a share in an ETF, you become a partial owner of the fund. The best buy and hold ETFs are index funds. These are funds which allow investors to earn a return that mirrors the performance of a particular stock market index, like the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, or the FTSE. A stock market index is a measure of the stock market and different indexes measure different parts of the market. For example, the S&P 500 index measures the stock performance of the 500 largest companies in the United States, whereas the FTSE 100 measures the 100 largest companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. So an index fund will gather money from lots of different investors, and use this money to buy shares in companies which are measured by a particular index. Therefore, an S&P 500 index fund will own shares in all the companies which are measured by the S&P 500 index. So by buying a share in the fund, you can own a small piece of each of the companies in the S&P 500, which saves you from going out and buying each of the companies individually that will be very expensive. ETFs have become extremely popular among investors and investment managers. PricewaterhouseCoopers surveyed 60 leading investment firms back in 2015 about the future prospects of ETFs. The respondents, along with PwC, expected global ETF assets to exceed $7 trillion by 2021. This is essentially how much stock and other assets they thought would be owned by ETFs by 2021. Fast Fast forward six years and global ETF assets have surpassed $10 trillion, which is 42% higher than expected. More money was invested in stock ETFs in the first four months of 2021 than the entirety of 2020 combined. ETFs are so attractive to investors because you can own a large number of investments by simply buying one single share in the fund. That's called diversification and it reduces the likelihood of a major investment loss. When you buy a share in an index fund, the return on investment that you get will be the return of the market. That's because the index itself measures the performance of a large number of highly valuable companies, which is representative of the market as a whole. Legendary investor and founder of Vanguard, John C. Bogle, once said, don't look for the needle in the haystack, just buy the haystack. 
82% of professional investment managers underperform the S&P 500. So your chances of trying to beat the market by picking individual stocks is virtually zero. Instead, why not own the entire market? In the 2019 Vanguard research paper, How to Increase the Odds of Owning the Few Stocks that Drive Returns, it was found that a diversified portfolio is more likely to hold outperforming stocks, while also providing less volatile returns. So buying and holding index funds over the long term is a solid investment option for any investor. But which index funds should you buy? Lots of investment management companies these days offer index fund ETFs like Vanguard, iShares and Invesco. What you want to look out for when picking index funds is the total expense ratio. The total expense ratio is a measure of the total costs associated with managing and operating the fund. The higher the ratio, the more expensive it is to own the fund. Ideally, you want to choose the fund with the lowest total expense ratio, but that's not always the only consideration. You also need to consider liquidity, i.e. how easy it is to get out of the investment once you're in, how the fund uses investment income, i.e. does it pay you a dividend or does it reinvest dividends back into the fund, and if you're European, you also need to consider domicile, i.e. where the fund is established. I personally own three index funds. One tracks the S&P 500, one tracks European companies, and the other tracks companies from emerging markets. All of my index funds are provided by iShares, and this made the most sense to me after I considered expense ratios, liquidity, and how the funds use their income. But depending on what your long-term investment goals are, a different provider might make sense for you. So we've discussed index funds, which are, in my opinion, the best and most reliable buy and hold investment investments in terms of capital appreciation, that is an increase in the value of your investment. In the 2015 S&P Global Research paper, The Importance of Dividends, it was noted that since 1956, dividends have accounted for 33% of the total return of the S&P 500, with capital appreciation making up the remaining portion. Clearly, dividends are very important to investors and the returns they earn. So doubling down on some solid dividend stocks to buy and hold can be a very lucrative decision. Let's quickly recap on dividends and why some companies pay them. When you purchase stock in a company, you become an owner of that company. As an owner, you're entitled to share in the profits that the company earns, relative to how many shares you own. The management of the company may choose to pay shareholders a dividend, which is a distribution of company profits. Coca-Cola, for example, currently pays a quarterly dividend of 42 cents per share. So if you own 1,000 shares in Coca-Cola, you'd receive $420 every quarter or $1,680 every year. Companies are not obligated to pay a dividend and may choose to reinvest the profits back into the company. Tesla, for example, have never paid a dividend because their focus is growing the company and using their earnings to finance that growth. If your investments pay you dividends, you're consistently earning a small bit of return each and every quarter. These dividends can be reinvested to earn you even more dividends. But if none of your investments pay dividends, you only earn a return when you sell the investment. And until you sell, any gains are at the whim of the market. But how do we know which dividend stocks are best? Is it all about who pays the highest dividend or are there other things to consider? Well, we can look at a stock's dividend yield to figure out what kind of bang for our buck we're getting. Dividend yield is calculated as the yearly dividend paid by a company divided by the stock price. Using our Coca-Cola example, we know that Coca-Cola pays a quarterly dividend of 42 cents per share. There are four quarters in a year, which gives us a yearly dividend of $1.68. One share in Coca-Cola will cost you $55 at the time of making this video. So Coca-Cola's dividend yield is $1.68 divided by $55 and multiplied by 100, which gives us a yield of just over 3%. Clearly, the higher the dividend is relative to the share price, the higher dividend yield will be. So why don't we just invest in the companies with the highest dividend yield? This is what's known as a yield trap. Sometimes a company's dividend yield is too good to be true, and it could be a case that the dividend is unsustainable and might need to be reduced or eliminated in the future. A quick trick to figure out if a dividend is sustainable is to take the market capitalization of a company, which can be found on Google, and multiply it by the dividend yield percentage. 
This will give you the total dividends that a company will pay out in a year. Then look at the free cash flow of the company, which is calculated as cash from operations minus capital expenditure. Free cash flow is used by companies to pay dividends, repay debt, and buy back shares. If the company doesn't have more than sufficient free cash flow to pay for the dividend that you've calculated, it likely isn't sustainable. With that being said, how do you pick the best buy and hold dividend stocks? With any dividend paying stock, you want to see the company earning lots of free cash flow, you want to see a proven history of dividend growth, you want to see low levels of debt, and you want to see earnings growth. A good place to start is the list of dividend aristocrats. Dividend aristocrats are S&P 500 member companies that have increased their dividend each and every year for at least 25 consecutive years. There are 65 companies in the S&P 500 which meet this criteria. Now what you're getting by investing in a dividend aristocrat is consistency. The management of these companies have made it their mission to increase dividend payouts to shareholders each and every year. But in order for that to work they need to be cash flow machines which most of these companies are but if you really want the creme de la creme of dividend stocks you go for the dividend kings dividend kings like dividend aristocrats are s p 500 member companies but 25 measly years of dividend increases isn't enough for the dividend kings no, no. This list is reserved for the companies with a minimum of 50 consecutive years of dividend growth. This elite group contains companies like Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, and Procter & Gamble. Any of the companies on this list will be a great addition to any long-term buy-and-hold investment portfolio, provided the price is right. Now let's discuss real estate investment trusts, better known as REITs, because they're my final buy and hold investment for 2022. A REIT is a company whose business involves acquiring or building real estate for the purpose of letting to tenants. The REIT owns the property and the tenant occupies the property in exchange for rent. If we go back as far as 1972, real estate investment trusts have outperformed the S&P 500. However, in the last 10 years, the S&P 500 has provided better total returns to investors. So why am I optimistic about REITs? Analysis performed by the National Association of REITs tells us that during periods of both moderate and high inflation, total returns on REITs outperform the S&P 500. This is true over 80% of the time when inflation is high and continues continuing to rise. We can clearly see on the graph that in times of moderate inflation, REITs provide very strong returns, better than the broader market. Inflation has become a big problem globally over the past few months, as our economies reopen for business and our supply chains continue to suffer. While the levels of inflation we're seeing now likely won't continue into the future, the OECD's future forecast for inflation for 2022, 23 and beyond is much higher than pre-pandemic levels. Based on the past performance of REITs during periods of inflation, they'll likely be a good hedge bet going forward. This is because both rents and real estate values tend to increase in line with inflation. Inflation aside, REITs are still very attractive. It's much easier to buy a share in a REIT on the stock market than it is to buy physical real estate. Plus, the cost of investing in REITs is obviously much lower. But the main benefit of investing in REITs actually comes from how REITs are set up and operated. REITs don't pay any tax on the money they receive from tenants. They also don't pay any tax on the gains they make from sales of real estate. A condition of this tax treatment is that 85% of the REIT's income must be paid annually to its shareholders. We mentioned earlier that companies aren't obligated to pay shareholders a dividend. This isn't the case for REITs. So therefore, REITs typically pay very attractive dividends. Beware of the yield trap because it applies to REITs just as equally as other dividend paying stocks. You're looking for REITs which are cash flow machines with a strong track record. Both Realty Income Corporation and Essex Property Trust are REITs who have qualified for dividend aristocrat status, while Federal Realty Investment Trust is the only REIT to qualify as a dividend king. REITs can operate in many different sectors, from residential and retail to industrial and healthcare. Overall, REITs give investors the ability to 
to own real estate assets without having to purchase and operate the property themselves. And going forward, I see them as a fantastic buy and hold opportunity. So that's three buy and hold investments for 2022 and beyond. The last two years have been ripe with uncertainty from worldwide lockdowns and business closures to supply chain nightmares and record level inflation. Nobody knows where the stock market is going to go today, tomorrow, next month or next year. But by investing in a way that makes sense in the context of your own personal circumstances and your short, medium and long term goals, you're protecting yourself against unnecessary loss. Having an investment strategy is key and buying and holding for the long term is one of the best strategies around. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.